Hello guys and girls and welcome to episode 12 of the VR Inside podcast. This is a weekly VR, AR and MR talk show that is live streamed every Saturday on Nathie's YouTube channel. You can tune into the show live at 4pm in Europe, 3pm in the UK and 9am in Central US. If you missed the podcast, you can catch up with it every Sunday where I upload the whole show to my own YouTube channel, Virtual Reality Oasis. If you want to listen to the audio only version, you can check it out on iTunes and Google Play Music. If you've got any questions, comments or feedback during the show, chuck them in the chat and we'll try and answer as many as we can. I just want to wish everyone also stateside that you've uh, had a happy Thanksgiving. And uh, now I'm just going to introduce you to everyone in the room. So he has become the dealer for my new addiction, and that is Pepper and Nuts. <laughs> it is Nathy. Hey, what's up? Yeah, you like Pepper Nuts? I love I'm Pepper Nuts. Yeah. I literally love them. Pepper so Nuts. Is, is yeah, that how is you? That, is that what you no, that's not that how you called? pronounce it. Pepper Nuts. <laughs> what Pe are they? How go on? How do you do it? Pepper Nuts. Pepper Nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Paper notes. So, so basically, to give you a bit of background about this, uh, Nathy sent me uh, some nice uh, little cinnamon biscuits from the Netherlands, and now I absolutely love them, and I'm addicted to them. I've actually eaten them all now, so I'm out. So I'm kind of like uh, on a on a come down from the <laughs> from the pepper nuts. Uh, yeah. But thank you for that, man. Thank you very oh, much. So the next guy, he has been spending all his free time in Skyrim and has become the new Lord of the Vale, and that is Zimtok Five. <laughs> Oh wait, Lord of the Lord of the Vale, you say? All right, fine. We'll have to. Here we go. We'll have to do something then for. Uh... Here we go. <laughs> yeah. That's it. We're all good. Uh, We're better that's... now. Right, the king. The that. king. Yeah, we king. <laughs> so Beautiful for mask. our audio uh, listeners, you know, uh, Zim is currently wearing his uh, Skyrim mask. It's very, very good, actually. It's very good. I'm mean, very impressed. Uh, I believe your your wife made you that. Is that right? She did out of out of duct tape and paper. She's uh, she's she's a pro. She's very creative, man. She's got some mad skills. Yeah. <laughs> I'm great, Mike. <laughs> Can you do a spell now? I mean, you're wearing it, so that should work. <laughs> so next up, it is the Rowdy Rowdy Piper, the Rowdy guy himself. How you doing, man? I'm great, man. How are you? I'm very well. Thank you very much for asking. Yeah. And uh, last but not least, myself, the host of the show, the bearded bald guy, Mike from Virtual Reality Oasis. Uh, as you can probably tell, there is an absence in the room. So Prometheus, uh, Austin, uh, unfortunately has left the show. So uh, he's decided to spend some more time uh, on other things in his personal life, and he can't make the show anymore. Uh, but we just wanted to say that we really appreciated his time that he spent with us on the show, and uh, we all wish him the best of luck in the future. So thanks for being a part of it, bro. Uh, you will be missed. Uh, in this week's show, we've got uh, a lot to talk about. We've got Skyrim VR, we've got Doom VFR, uh, Haptics, which is some haptic feedback gloves. We've got Coco VR, which is made by Pixar. Uh, we've got an awesome experience called Dispatch to talk about. And finally, we're going to finish it up on The Void, which is kind of like a warehouse scale VR experience. So I'm just going to kick it straight off with uh, Skyrim VR. So uh, Bethesda released Skyrim VR on the PSVR on the 17th of November. And this weekend, uh, obviously, has been Black Friday, so there's been some amazing uh, PSVR deals. And uh, many of those deals has had Skyrim bundled into it. So there was one particularly great one, which was like uh, $350, and that had basically a PSVR, uh, move controllers, the camera, and Skyrim, the game. Uh, so maybe that has something to do with like uh, the, the great sales that it's seen because funny uh, fact is that Skyrim on uh, VR has actually outsold the Nintendo Switch version, which is uh, very interesting indeed. Yeah, wow. but um, like I say, that may be because it was bundled with a, a PSVR and had this like Black Friday deal. So maybe that kind of makes the, the sales kind of a bit out of skew a little bit. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, on paper, it's uh, outside uh, outsold the uh, the Nintendo Switch version. So that is uh, very interesting indeed. Could also be that uh, kids own the Switch more than uh, <laughs> more than people who should be playing Skyrim. <laughs> could, could well be, could well be. And I'm actually ashamed to say that I have never actually played Skyrim before. Um, but I understand that you guys have been spending a lot of time in this uh, magical world. Is that right? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I spent. I mean, I also did the. I did the giveaway with the PlayStation VR to celebrate the 50k mark. 
Uh, but uh, wow. I, I'm playing a lot of Skyrim actually. I'm actually really enjoying it as well. There's been uh, I've done like three three live streams I think, and then uh, one uh, uh, one just regular. Uh, but it's uh, it's a lot of fun. You know, it really feels as as if you're playing Skyrim. And of course, there are bugs, and it's a little bit of an older game. But it it really feels like the first big open world title that actually hits a VR platform. In my opinion, I think that's a, that's a great addition to the. And it will convince a lot of people to to buy VR. Yeah, That's and you say, you're, you're right in that it's an old game because it's about six years old. Am yeah, I right? Yeah. Uh, and did you play the uh, the vanilla version of the game before the VR version? Um, I did. I did. I I played it when it just uh, when it just released. I played the full game. I didn't try any of the expansions yet. I haven't uh, gotten into that. Although uh, well, they might even be better than the than the original game. I heard. But um, yeah. I'm actually really excited about diving into them as well in my little spare time that i have so with the uh the expansions are they included in this vr sort of uh version of it that all the expansions are included with it or are they going to be dlc later on down the line do you think i i know there's like a couple of the expansions i don't know if all of the expansions are in there i know don is in there um there's three there's yeah, three, there's three three are in there yeah and did, is the horse armor included in that band in that bundle <laughs> Because <laughs> I know that was kind of like a controversial kind of uh, a bit of DLC, right? Like the horse armor. Is that right? Why is that controversial? I'm really curious now. Well, uh, because of, transaction. yeah, I think it was one of the first ones and it was just oh. like a cosmetic thing, you know, like you have a fancy horse. Yeah, but it was like the... <laughs> if, if, if that's your bag, then yeah, that's like fine. Yeah, that was uh, like the Elder Scrolls Online game, by the way, not the uh, Skyrim. Uh... Oh, was it? That, that, that goes, just goes to show how much of a noob I am when it comes to Skyrim. So <laughs> yeah. apologies yeah. for our viewers that will probably <laughs> roast me I, for that. So. Yeah, I, I suppose, Mike, I mean, the thing I would say is I went into Skyrim. I'd never, I, I knew like nothing. I, I probably knew three things. Um, I knew Buzro Da, I knew Arrow to the Knee, and I knew that Skyrim was a game <laughs> that was continuing the Elder Scrolls series. And th that was probably all I knew going into it. Um, I had played a little bit of, I'd seen my brother play Morrowind uh, back when we were teenagers. Brilliant. And then I would played yeah. Oblivion about like the first hour and that was it. Like I'd, I'd not had like any engagement. And all I knew was that these games were like stupidly long. That, that, was, that was all I knew. And that there was like loads of content. And having seen what Morrowind was, and that was such a favorite for people. I was kind of like, well, I don't know if it's my kind of game. You know, I, I was fully expecting to pay the price, which for me was like 50 quid. So that was not cheap. Uh, but a lot of the PSVR titles that are, say, pseudo AAA or AA um, are at that price. They're like 50 mm -hmm. or 60. So it's one of those false economies where people go, oh, I'll go for the cheaper headset. Then they don't realize that they've spent 400 quid on games. Like, I mean, <laughs> that's kind of part of the package. But PSVR as it is, is great. And then... I've I've played kind of all the big things like Resident Evil and Farpoint and stuff like that. So to compare against those, I'd just say that I did not realize that a game world could have so much content in it and to allow you to just free roam to the extent that I free roam when I'm playing Minecraft. Like I'm, I'm worst, the worst person in the world to kind of go and build something. I'm great for just, just wander for like six hours. So maybe that explains why I spent 26 hours last weekend uh in skyrim and and only completed three quests but wow. it was literally probably my favorite vr experience and certainly best single player experience and longest time in a vr title yet in the last four years so i was floored by it i still am it's so much fun and uh i didn't realize that the environments that were created for a, for non-vr could be uplifted so well like I'm super convinced, and as Rowdy said, this is to me is a material turning point. Like this is now setting a bar from which other titles of this nature are going to be set. And the fact that we've got two other Bethesda games coming, I'm like, holy god, damn! They're, they're, I'm really looking forward to stuff that I was totally expecting to come on today and just slate. You know, be like, this is <laughs> do not put your money in this. But it's great. I, I'm telling people buy the console play the game yeah and, wow. and the thing is that uh, since you, you mentioned indeed that they set a bar that's that's something that Bethesda has done actually before as well with the um, mm. uh, with the other times because Morrowind was like a game-changing thing like they changed yeah. RPGs just in general like to, to have literally an open world in which you could basically do you know you could do the quest you could, you could do the main quest but you could spend 
hundreds of hours in that game, not even touching the main quest. And I think that that they, they gave that freedom to a player was something really game-changing. And I'm so happy that they decided to bring that to a VR platform as well. And, and, and last time, just before the stream, Zim, you said that you've you've got a percentage complete. Uh, what, what, what is that percentage again? It's 3%. <laughs> 3%. And that's after, that's after 26 hours. That's after about 40 no. hours now, because I've been streaming it throughout the week. Um, wow. And, and it's... It's just one of those things that, uh, I mean, if people are interested to see what Skyrim VR looks like, uh, they can go check it out. It's running live right now, even uh, on Zimtalk 5 TV over on Twitch. So I've been running it all week. So I did like the 26 hours. And for people who are interested in seeing it, I mean, we had like 70 people watching reruns, you know, uh, it, because it's such a cool game to watch as well. Mm -hmm. Like seeing people draw a bow and the bow, by the way is totally overpowered. Like I didn't play the original. I don't know how, I mean, there's like a bow timing, I guess. You have to like draw an arrow, shoot an arrow, draw an arrow. In this, you're bloody Legolas. You're like, bah, 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 and then the thing goes down. Yeah. Goodbye, troll. <laughs> it's true, yeah. it's true, yeah. No, but it's like, that's like difficult for an open world game. Like when I started playing Skyrim and also Fallout on, on, on PC, I was like, okay, uh, I'm going to play the first quest and then it's like hey what is that building oh hey but what is that like running over there oh uh, oh it wants something for me oh yeah well never mind uh, hey hey i see a castle hey nice uh, so uh, that's how you keep on and then after a while you know the whole map and then you start to like pick some quests so yeah but it's it's really nice um i think that um this will like set the bar for other uh, uh developers too where we see more classic games come to vr because it mm. did prove that it works I still think that the like gameplay wise, if you are into VR for a bit longer, it can be a bit disappointing. I mean, uh, yeah, it's it's of course a part of the VR game, so you know what you get, of course. But uh, still, I mean, I, with the menus, it was fine. I think that how they uh, did the menus, where you can use your controller and just hover through everything, is very easy, Works very, very nicely well. uh, done. Not like touching buttons with your controller all the time. Uh, super easy, but it's just like, you know, let's say if Skyrim had that Garn slash sword fighting simulator uh, thing in there and then all the things we have in those other titles, man, oh man, then it would be freaking crazy. But in the end, it's a fairly simple uh, uh, way of you playing the game. You know, you can swing your sword. You don't need to be very specific with the bow and arrow you need to. So that's really nice. But um, yeah, I think it, I think it's it's very... It has been like it, you know, I expected it to be a little disappointing after I played the demo because it was like, are they ready for the launch? And uh, they were definitely ready for the launch. Yeah. And uh, I think that Fallout is going to hit a big bomb too, in a way, you know, I think that a lot of people are going to play that. And uh, with Doom, I'm not sure. I mean, uh, Mike also uh, mentioned that Doom is uh, fairly cheap. So I expect it to be very short. It would be funny if Doom is going to be the, the worst of those three games, well, it has been built from the ground up for VR, you know? Yeah. Um, but let's say if Skyrim, but it's an old game, so they couldn't really change it. They had to work for years to make that like a, a, a proper VR game, you know, where you could yeah. interact with things, grab things. Um, so I think they, they did a great job. And for developers, it's so easy to do this. And for us VR community, it's, it's, it's yeah, it's Refreshing. getting so much more popular. Yeah, but it's Doom, uh, that's a really important thing to just mention because there was the news about locomotion that dropped as a kind of like a someone's yeah. I don't know if someone's played it. I, don't, I saw it on Reddit, though, but they were saying because everyone's I think who's seen the videos has seen the dash mechanic, which seems to be the default. Yeah. So in other words, you, you go to a location, it shows you moving there fast. And a lot of games are starting to use this, which is like a comfortable way to not do a blink teleport. So instead, you're just traveling there quickly and it still doesn't vex your stomach from a from a sim sickness side yeah. but i haven't seen a single video yet of smooth locomotion in doom i'd be really interested if i've seen how I've do you keep one. how do you keep the pace of that yeah Is yeah like running I've like seen one, i've seen one fortress? video but but someone they weren't really fighting they were just walking through a room um uh, it's it's just funny that they announced this in like a silent way again almost like they are um uh, you know um uh, ashamed of walking loco well it's something you really need to announce because people love it. 
But that's um, a design for though, isn't it, Nathan? I mean, if you're a studio, especially as big as Bethesda, you you have that debate internally. You say, what are we going to push? What's going to be our banner? And clearly they've said, well, you know, Dash is going to uh, be that for, because it's the, it feels the best. Our mechanics uh, work the best yeah. with it. So I, I wouldn't say that they're ashamed of it, but I think the, the big question is, was it a last minute bolt on? Will it work properly end to end through this game? And the other piece of surprise news for me was I didn't know this was going to be, uh, it wasn't going to be Doom and the full Doom package. Again, it, it, it's actually a design yeah. for, so like the the great applaud and award that the original Doom had a couple of years ago when it dropped, you can't guarantee that this content is that good. So I agree with you. That this is definitely the biggest rogue factor out of the three Bethesda games that's dropping. So with um, with Skyrim, like, does it have different locomotion options, a bit like the new Doom yeah. title? So yeah. you can what teleport is. if you, you, you're not comfortable with full locomotion? That's the default. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But That's the default. Have... I mean, if you want smooth motion, motion, you've got it. And this is a big thing we were talking about, actually, as well. I think, Rowdy, you probably corrected me on this, but this, the, smooth, the smooth turning at the moment. So if you're on D-pad or if you're on a DualShock controller, mm -hmm. uh, you can do smooth turning. Yeah. Um, so you can do, like, proper just smooth locomotion, smooth turning, which is the kind of thing like veterans like me really enjoy. And yep. then with the move controllers, you're limited for the moment to snap turning. But Rowdy, yeah. they, I think they said that they're going to bring in with a patch smooth turning. I, I don't know if they actually confirmed that they're already uh, going to do that, but there's been a lot of uh, question from the community. So I guess that with the next patch, they, they will include that. Uh, but the thing is, with the with the move controls, indeed, you have like those two button, uh, two bottom bottoms, and uh, you press those to get like a, a certain snap turn, uh, and you can do that indeed gradually, yeah, that it like uh, like moves like this, like uh, in, in, in in gradations basically, uh, or you can do it that it's like instant, so it snaps then. Uh, it's a snap turn or the, or the smooth turn, but it's not it's not like that you can control the gradation of the turn then. So if they would just make that gradation of the turn uh, smooth as well, then uh, they, they could actually fix that really quickly. I, I do you, have to say both control me? schemes. I was going to ask you what your uh, what your preference was. Yeah, I have a preference and I'll say it I, I have I have a preference as well. Like uh, I used uh, the instant for that one because I find it really, really unnerving when I use um, uh, uh, the gradation like it, it turns and it takes like a few like a second or something before it's like there i find that like a, a really yeah with like that weird shadow experience view. yeah exactly yeah, yeah. it doesn't I, I, vignette I, nathy no it doesn't vignette you can you can turn that you can off, turn it right? off yeah you can turn it off yeah, i think vignetting I, is one thing it's strange because these comfort options to me are really uncomfortable yeah but i think well. as someone who's not used to vr motion yeah. they help them but to me yeah. like it, it makes me not feel right yeah, yeah if I, exactly. uh, vignetting vignetting is like when there's a tunnel vision applied so you don't yeah. see that much it's the same that they do to horses with the blinders yeah. on take, yeah. take away a bit you, of the you said this before world. haven't you rowdy like uh, you said before that you know these comfort features tend to make you more sick than yeah i the, the first thing i do in uh, any kind of vr game is turn off all of the comfort features just because i don't i don't it doesn't make me feel more comfortable because i think i've I've played like games that are have really bad locomotion just in general, and I think that like made me uh, a little bit more resistant to those kind of things, and that I prefer to have it as natural as possible, uh, so that I can just you know figure it out myself. But indeed, like I would like to see like a smooth look, a smooth moving of the of the head included in in uh, in Skyrim in Skyrim as well. What I do have to say is that I did have have quite a bit of trouble getting all of the control uh, all of the controls yeah. in my hat because uh, there's oh, like yeah, a lot yeah. of stuff but once you do once you do it's you it's do, fairly the control yeah. design is great it's yeah. on both it's true on, i was really impressed yeah. at how much they were able to get out of those controllers yeah, and also just, the was... move controllers battery life i went straight for 15 hours and they didn't go flat i thought they had like six hours in them i yeah, was yeah. really surprised yeah yeah. I think, I, in, in my opinion, like, but that's Skyrim, like the, the, the classic Skyrim, you do the tutorial while playing. But I think for VR, they should have done one before and explain everything because you had to do some stuff and you're like, oh shit, how do, do I need to walk around now? And I think that, yeah, they should have done that instead where you have like, uh, you know, you're in some kind of like hologram maybe where you need to do all those movements. It's kind of hard to get into it in a way, you know? I think they could introduce that in a more well satisfying way mm -hmm. it's kind of because the game is kind of old you know it doesn't really meet up with the other introductions we had in other vr games this you mean the, the very beginning is that what you're talking about yeah 
Yeah. Like a tutorial. I don't remember, it, yeah. it. <laughs> I don't remember yeah. it at all. Because I, I remember previous episodes when we were talking about like Skyrim coming out in the future, there was a lot of concern about because it's a very menu heavy game, but you guys yeah. seem to think that that's not been an issue with the release and they've kind of nailed it in a way. Yeah. 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 Interesting. I agree. The, Interesting. The, motion, the sweet motion. So what Nathan was describing earlier with the, with the, uh, with the move controller, um, a lot of people were asking me like, well, hang on a second. How's he moving? He doesn't have an analog stick or anything. Mm -hmm. So on the left move controller, if you're using move, you hold down the center button and then that moves you forward. So kind of like, it's kind of like uh, where, I think it's where your controller's aiming or where your head is aiming. You can decide, I think. Yeah, you can decide that, you, you can decide. So like even riding a horse, you can have the horse going forward or off a mountain and uh, be drawing <laughs> a, a bow and pointing at something and you know shoot a rabbit on the go. Like it, it works incredibly well. And so the move controller surprised me to the point where, again, I, I've spent, about 40 hours in the game now through the various sessions. Rowdy said, you know, it's difficult to kind of learn the button mapping because actually every discrete button does a different thing. Usually what you find is duplication in games. They Double, used every yeah, button, exactly. essentially. And so that takes a little while to kind of get in, into your head. I'd say a couple of hours even. But then once you've got it, I, I now, I prefer the more casual version of the move to the DualShock. I think if you're going up against like a really hardcore boss or something, then you probably want to use the DualShock but I'm playing it on expert and I haven't had an issue so far. Um, mm -hmm. I think companionship in the game is something, if you miss that, my companion has been brilliant. So like, <laughs> pick up someone who can fight alongside you and play in the game. But Mike, yeah. I, I think you, you're gonna have to find a way to play this game. And also- well, That kind of brings brings me on to, uh, go on, Ready? Yeah, also I wanted to touch on that real quick. Like, uh, since I think that we all had like a little bit lower expectations for, for the game as well, that we were a little bit surprised about it, because of course there are like, quite some some issues still with the game that I find personally, like Nati said as well, like it would be nice to see like, uh, we, we all knew they were going to use like move controllers and that the control schemes were gonna be a little bit more complicated because you know, they were not going to make those puzzles that you can interact with the puzzles and with the hands as well because it's still a ported VR game. Uh, but indeed, it would have been nice to see that included as well. Like take that really to the next level and see like if like those move controllers can also like, you know, interact with the puzzles. You have like those puzzles where you need to like turn stuff around and uh, yeah. not real, but it's just basically pressing a button. But I think that all of us kind of already realized that it was going to be that way, that they were not going to be able to make a ported version and then include right. that, uh, that kind of hand control as well. So I do think uh, yeah. that that is what uh, what lowered our expectations a bit as well, and that uh, made us feel yeah. so great about this game. Yeah, yeah, that's true. It's just for me, like if someone is new to VR, then I'm not sure if they should go for Skyrim first because there are so many awesome VR games that use motion controls yeah. and its full potential, you know. Yeah. And that's not what Skyrim does, for example. Of mm -hmm. course, Skyrim is like a thing you play later on. It's like wow, uh, amazing. But since they advertised it so cool with like someone uh, welding the swords and then doing crazy things. Um, you know, people don't see the difference between uh, uh, native VR and uh, parted VR. So yeah. that's kind of like the issue you have here where people don't know the difference. You know, they expect every game to be like what they played before. If you want to drink a potion in Skyrim, you just point a button and then you drink it. Yeah, uh, It's not like you're going to drink it like that, you know, yeah. or you're going to actually uh, ride a horse and you need to hold your uh, moves in a way. Riding a horse was uh, surprisingly uh, 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 cool too. Uh, really nice. Yeah, I like that. I haven't been able to do that yet. At night and having that old school soundtrack that you heard many times before and that never gets uh, boring uh, is just great. And then you see some animals and you're shooting a bunny and you take it with you and you're like, okay, I need to walk for like, maybe uh, 10 minutes more, but there are like some bandits on the left. So I will just take that shortcut on the right. You know, that, that's Skyrim. It's like the the the, the PC ad adventure I had works totally fine with VR too. It's not like uh, VR is clumsy, I can't do this. It's exactly the same, it works so well. And and, and, the, and the controls are so basic and it, it's mm. still, that's, that's also because, I mean, this year we didn't have that many uh, kick-ass titles. So having this as like the, the uh, uh, fireworks is, of course, uh, amazing. Mm. It's fantastic. That's what I said in my review as well. Like, it's unbelievable. A couple of years ago, people were still playing Skyrim with far packs. And, and now you got like uh, positional tracking. And yeah. You walk around. It's just that I do hope they will add a guardian system next to the smooth uh, movement. Because, yeah, there is like a, a, a map in front of you, you know, the compass. 
but um, since you move a lot and you're fighting, uh, it's kind of hard. You know, you need that point on the ground to stay there because uh, before you know it, you're walking away. So I do hope they will add that like they did in Farpoint, you know, where you have like grid behind you. So yeah, you that was very well done there. Um, yeah. I think that would be a lot safer because people think that they can just ride a dragon. I'm not sure if you guys have seen the trailer of Skyrim VR, but the guy's jumping off a cliff. Uh, let's not hope people are going to jump out of the window <laughs> because they think they can. I I've shown uh, the trailer yeah. a couple of times. So, so right now, obviously, Skyrim VR is a timed exclusive for PSVR. So it is timed exclusive. So we believe it's coming to PC at some point in the future, but not quite sure when. Uh, and that's probably when I'll jump into the game and check it out. But for me, like Skyrim is just such a, like a an overwhelming uh, thing for me because it's just such a huge world. You know, like Zim has put like 40 hours into the game. He's only complete like 3%. And I'm a bit of like a completionist. Like I like to complete games. And I just like know in my mind that I'm never going to finish it. Like unless I just d don't sleep for a few months and just dedicate my life to spending it in yeah. Skyrim. So in a way, it's kind of like taking that blue pill. You kind of have to make a choice in your life whether you're going to have to commit to this or not. <laughs> or, you know, maybe you should play some throwaway 20-minute titles. I don't know. But I'm glad that this exists because this is what people have been asking for for mm. such a long time. But I really would love to see the statistics in like a year or so's time to see how much time each player spent in this world and whether, you know, how many, what are the percentage of players that actually got to like a, a decent completionist level like 70 percent or whatever like that uh because that is such a long period of time and it kind of brings me on nicely to uh uh this guy he's he's been playing uh skyrim on a treadmill <laughs> to uh stay to stay fit so what he's done is he's kind of taken his playstation vr and his move and he's basically put it right in front of a walking treadmill so when he's playing skyrim he's actually walking on a real life treadmill and he's saying like it can take him, you know, uh, three hours to walk from uh, a place called White Run to Rorikstead. I don't even know what that is, but uh, he said it took him three hours. And Jeez. during that three hours, he was like plodding along on a treadmill. So like, the, the, like we've mentioned it before, gamers of the future are going to be like the most fit and healthiest people in the world. Uh, or well, their skin oh. will be like pale, and they may not be like healthy in terms of the food they eat, but they'll be like pretty like slim and 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 fit. <laughs> Dude, I need a fake horse, man. I need a fake <laughs> horse now. No, that would be like, that would totally fit. If I sit on the horse and I see the horse in front of me and I got that sword and I'm just, that, 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 that would totally work. Totally. Yeah. Work. <laughs> so it, it, it's, it's crazy. And I love that yeah. this exists. And I'm really excited now to, uh, to sort of think about what Fallout 4 and Doom, obviously, VFR is going to be like. Uh, and that kind of brings us on nicely to Doom VFR, because um, obviously that's coming out really soon. It's going to be out on the 1st of December for PSVR and the HTC Vive. Uh, and a lot of uh, Oculus uh, users like myself have been asking the question for a long time now whether you know this is going to see uh, some support for the Oculus, whether it's going to kind of work in a way, even though it's not officially supported. But I guess we still don't have any information about that. So we're going to have to wait until next week's show. I don't know. I'd imagine I'd, I'd have got to try it by then to let you guys know what the score is. But like you touched on, Zim, this isn't the original or the newer version of Doom. This is a completely separate story yeah. Yeah. Uh, built built from the ground up in VR. Uh, and you know, apparently, according to the sort of uh, the blurb, you kind of wake up you're 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 uh, instantly killed almost and then you your brain is transported to different uh bodies essentially which you can control throughout the world and i think there's a bit in the trailer where you see like a kind of mechanical hand that you can control which mm -hmm. is really really sweet um so i'm really looking forward to this one but like you say it's um it's 19 uh 99 uh pounds uh 29 dollars and uh i think we said before the stream nathy that you're kind of concerned in a way that you're thinking it might be a quite a short experience compared to obviously the epic well, Skyrim based, on, based on the price i mean yeah sometimes we have games that come out and and they uh, yeah I, let's say for example uh uh wolfenstein from bethesda uh the old blood I think I paid around 20 for that one as well. And that was really decent. So mm. maybe, but it's VR. So I don't know uh, if that's going to be uh, like something that is going to be great too, then I don't even know what to say anymore. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's uh, going to be a bit of a one-time title, isn't it? Because it's going to be 68 yeah. hours is what the dev is saying. I so just hope, I just, 20, even hours. if it's short, I just hope they will catch that that Doom feeling, that classic yeah. fast-paced, get ammo, if you stop moving, you're dead, that kind of stuff, you know? Um, but uh, I do know a developer that works on the game, so we might 
uh, invite him over and then see what he has to say or someone else that wants to tell us something about it and, and mm. get us hyped up, you know? Mm. Could yeah, definitely. Like, too, right? It's only a week away. Yeah. yeah exactly. What do you guys think? Do you think um, the Rift is going to work with this title? Uh, I think that's the question that most people are asking yeah, right now. Definitely. You, you, you yeah, think it will work out the box? Yeah. With, with no uh, community modding or any tweaking or anything? Interesting. Um, I, don't, I don't know. I, don't know. I mean, I don't know. I, I don't know. No, I don't Since know. I mean, have you guys heard about Payday? Payday they too, had yeah. like no support for for touch. It was the first one that that had that problem, and I don't think it was intended either, because within a day the devs had patched it out so that it would working. So mm -hmm. I think it's a strategic mistake if if the if Bethesda uh, decides along with its software if they, if they decide like you know we're going to launch this and and half of the potential market we're going to uh, cut out and piss off. You don't want that. Nobody wants that. Plus, plus, they have more power if they let uh, Oculus users buy their game. It's kind of yeah. a troll yeah. either way, you know? So it doesn't really matter. Uh, so that's exactly what I'm hoping for. I'm hoping that although they say it's coming to PSVR and HTC Vive, that if you buy it on the Rift, it's just going to work. Yeah, it's just not um, going to come to the platform. To yeah, it's not going to come to Oculus Home. Yeah. But that's right. Does that affect any of us? No. No. And that, and that is another thing that I've found actually with a lot of Oculus users is they don't tend to use Steam VR. So if you are an Oculus user, I would say just don't be scared. Jump into Steam VR world. Like things are much better now than they used to be. And a yep. lot of titles seem to work very, very nicely with the Rift. Uh, in some instances, when you've got like a, a game releasing on both platforms, I can't tell the difference between mm -hmm. whether it's on a, an Oculus store or the, the Steam store. Uh, whereas in the past, I used to be able to tell the difference because the quality would be a little bit different, but that doesn't seem to be the case anymore. And if it so, wouldn't uh, work, then it would probably work within like uh, you know a couple of days because there's so many people that would get yeah. angry about that. Yeah, like we have, we have such an, an amazing community of people that are so passionate about it that they will work day and night to yeah. make sure that this comes to the platform, even if it's not officially supported. You're absolutely right. So, you know, uh, I'm I'm very very excited. Out of all the titles uh, from Bethesda, this is the one that I'm personally looking forward to the most. So uh, I'm I'm probably gonna pre-order it or something like that, um, uh, or buy it on the day it comes out and, and check it out. So hopefully by next week's show, we should have an answer whether Doom VR uh, VFR will officially work or not, and uh, whether it's any good. But I'm pretty sure in the back of my mind, it's gonna be a, a pretty sweet game. I mean, it's the first like test for Bethesda to show off like a game that has been built from the ground up for VR. So they might get into it a little slowly, but uh, mm -hmm. I mean, they they got Doom as as like their their flagship in a way for VR. Then I do know? see this indeed as a lot as like a like a test, like to see like yeah. what how how far can we push this platform? Because yeah. I think like the the Skyrim and the Fallout titles are like more like well, we know we will bring in an audience. Uh, but let's try like uh, a franchise that is that is very popular and was very was even more popular uh, yeah. a while back, and see if we can um, bring a new title on that platform and see uh, how, how people like that yeah. and merge that in between like uh, the two other ones. Yeah. I think that's the the strategy they're going about. Yeah, it's also a chain of sales. If you like Skyrim, you're having an absolute blast. You want to experience more. Uh, in VR and then they start selling a bundle where you can get all the games together. Yeah. Right now that's not going to be uh, like happening because Skyrim VR is a PlayStation VR exclusive expected to come out to PC on like uh, maybe six months, right? Actually, you know what, maybe uh, you just made me think about this. If you're a parent with a teenage kid, right? Boy or girl, doesn't matter. PSVR with like, in those three games Damn, you're gonna blow your kid out of the water with that. One. <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah, that's the package that but I can like, imagine. Actually, like they, like this is so funny. Um, there, there have been so many games this year, VR games coming out, and Bethesda is like, bam, like nothing else is relevant anymore. Yeah, <laughs> it's so simple. Like that's that's why AAA developers are so powerful. And uh, I think and, I think it's a good thing as like, well. Ah, well. They are gonna like milk out Skyrim again because they brought out Skyrim so many times, and now the VR version and Switch. But then, then, like you, you really see that people really appreciate it, man. Like the VR version is is great, and they offer three genres of games too. You know, like mm. if you don't like Skyrim, then Fallout is more like like a shooter kind of adventure scavenge thing. I mean, Fallout isn't that old either, so ah, that's gonna be 
freaking awesome. And I think it's a great uh, yeah. thing for, for like other developers as well, because you know, there's going to come a time that people say, OK, like I, I played like 40 hours of Skyrim now. That's more than enough. Yeah. Let me see what else is on the Steam market. And then, uh, you know, they, they get to other titles as well. So as long as it convinces people to like get into that yeah. VR scene and have a great time, then people will keep on investing yeah. in it. And that will be great yeah, news for other developers as well. It's easy development too. It's a lot cheaper because you already got the game there and you just add some support. It's just that I don't hope that all the developers will think like, hey, we just got old games. Let's all like port them to VR and we see no real built from the ground up for VR experiences. Or new IP, right? Because again, you, 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 the menu system in Skyrim st stood out, right? But we thought it was going to be trash, but it, it, it ended up being with the, the move smooth motion for selection and everything. It's actually lovely, yeah. uh, but still it's a menu. Like, why do we have menus? Like, what, what's what's the point? Do you have a menu in real life that pops no. up when you walk through your door in no, your bathroom? Like, that doesn't, yeah. that just doesn't make sense. So in the virtualized environment, like, this more natural method of training uh, is going to come through, you know, once they've developed more uh, from the ground up IP. I really mm -hmm. like what they, they always do with the, with the holograms, like on their arm. Like you like switch that, that around and so use that as a... Like some people oh, hate I that, that shit. I love that. I love that stuff. I really do. I don't, I don't mind it. It's fine. It's the thing that I like and I find that it works really well. And I think someone mentioned that Doom has this is if you have something, if you're grabbing something, so grabbing a tool mm -hmm. that then does the grabbing or the button pushing for you, ah, you okay. lose the need for the tactile feedback in your finger and it works really well mentally. Like you go to push a button with something that you're grabbing and it that that just seems to work so much better. Nathan, did you mention it? Is that in, in Doom or Fallout, a claw something or other you, you mentioned, I think? Oh, the claw in, in Skyrim, the golden claw, like the first quest. Where you open the door, yeah, you, but that was just pressing a button. But oh, an example, okay, I can you give just is, meant the puzzle, right? I understand. But an example of, of where that works really well was, for example, raw data, where you have like that uh, big, um, what is it, like a USB or something, mm -hmm. like a hack tool, and you just, you know, it just clicks yeah. in and done. It would work great for Fallout as well with the with the Pip Boy, you know, that that you like use the Pip Boy as like a certain device with the buttons mm -hmm. on the vibe. I think that could work. But I, I like the Pip Boy again. I'm not sure. Like I, I think I said it before. Um, in Fallout, when you have the Pip Boy, so you have it on your arm. Yes, it's there. But when you go a little closer, it turns into a menu too. You know, like right. usually have, but then a little bit more 3D. Don't you it's have a Pip like, Boy? Uh, beep, boop, boop, uh, yeah, I do have one. Yeah, <laughs> um, that one is a lot easier to control with just a couple of fingers. But there's it to dinner uh, parties, don't you, Nathan? Yeah, but again, like just check that's the time. It. <laughs> <laughs> but overall man it's 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 all those games are gonna be great i i guess but it's just that i'm missing the the fact that i can't holster my sword or i can grab my backpack to get some potions you know that's like the the ultimate vr experience that adds exactly the immersion that's you know? what that's still something uh, that i want i want to grab behind my back and like pull out yeah, like a giant yeah. sword and I go charging at the dragon that is the experience that i need <laughs> i'll see what i'm missing I am missing multiplayer in that game. The only thing I can think that it needs to add is I want to see someone else walk up next to me. I don't. That's yeah. it. I don't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mr. I hate Mr. people. <laughs> yeah, but but maybe you know because uh, Skyrim had a big mod community behind it on the PC platform, right? Yeah. Mm. Huge. Possibly a bit like uh, what we've seen with uh, Robo Recall, that the developers kind of open it up to the modding community, and then maybe we can do some cool stuff. Can you like PlayStation? A PlayStation? Well, uh, no, no, no. I'm talking to when it comes to PC. Ah, uh, okay. Like, I, 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 like, honestly, I don't think they're going to do mods for PC. Of course, they could earn some money on it because you need to pay mods nowadays. Like uh, back in the day, Skyrim mods were free. Uh, they now have like a store where you can uh, spend credits. Um, but um, I don't think so, because in the end, they want to protect the experience of people. And with VR, uh, you can get real, really sick um, yeah. if they allow at least movement mods. But yeah, I don't know. Maybe they will. It would be nice, though, especially if we can uh, uh, boost up the graphics, because you can really notice that the game, at least on PlayStation VR, it has been extremely downgraded. Yeah. Of course, it looks nice, but compared to PC, it's, of course, a lot different. But I hope 
we will be able to get a lot of settings for that too. Yeah. It really feels like uh, the PSVR is a really attractive platform right now because like, you know, I, I, I had uh, a friend of mine around last night, obviously showing in the new space that I've got here. So I can actually kind of actually get people over to show them VR now for a change, which is really, really nice. And he was playing Arctic One. He was getting so like drawn into it, really loved the game. And then uh, straight afterwards, he was like, so, you know, how much is it going to be for a PC? And I was like, oh, it's going to be quite expensive for a PC. And then it's like 350 to 400 quid for a, a Rift right now, if, depending if you get one in the sale. But with a PSVR, you know, it's it's a it's a much cheaper and more viable option for him. So he's actually thinking about picking one up. It's so, such uh, a great you know, deal. It's such a yeah, great deal because yeah. you can have a full VR a VR setup for like what is it now? Five hundred dollars, I think. I think yeah, four yeah, nine yeah, nine. Yeah, yeah. It's that's oh, that's unbeatable, nice. unbeatable. And I have to say it as well, like PlayStation is really pushing uh, the VR market as well. Like I, yeah. the, the amount of mm. advertising and marketing campaigns in, in my country, for example, I don't know about, about the U S or the UK. I know that in Belgium, they currently have something called the PSVR backpacker, which is a, yeah. a YouTuber from Belgium who basically travels around the yeah. country with a backpack, with a PlayStation in there. And he goes, wow. and, you know, they have a website, you can subscribe there. And then he comes by one evening and they just play like PSVR games like the entire evening and he records it. And then PlayStation <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. uses that as a promotional campaign. It's, it's brilliant. Wow. It's unbelievable. That is genius. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Oculus, if you're listening, we will be the Oculus. Well, I'll be the Oculus backpacker. <laughs> the Oculus backpacker. Yeah, I'll, I'll just go around and play <laughs> Oculus games in house and demo them. Yeah, I'm happy to do that. I'll quit my job tomorrow. <laughs> All right, fine. <laughs> yeah, I want to be the Pimax backpacker. Yeah, yeah you can do that. <laughs> okay. um, so, so yeah, like uh, moving on from Skyrim then, right. and and Doom VFR and Bethesda to uh, some hardware, and we're talking about haptics, mm -hmm. and this is uh, haptic feedback gloves. So this was an article by Upload VR, mm -hmm. and basically they uh, they had spoken to the company, and it used to be a company called Axon VR. Uh, they had previously raised around five million, um, and they're rebranding to Haptics, which is just H A P T X, uh, and they were revealing the future of like kind of their uh, haptic feedback prototype, which is a glove, uh, and it kind of uses uh, micro pneumatics and some force feedback uh, pads and bits and pieces in this glove. Like, like, don't get me wrong, like it's a chunky looking thing. Like, uh, Rowdy will probably show you guys the video, but and and it's got like a real thick tethered cord to it right now but it is a prototype after all but what they've eventually what they've essentially developed is these kind of like bendable fabrics that can be uh sewn into sort of like clothing or gloves or you know a suit eventually maybe in the future and they've got these kind of tiny little air pipes that run along the sort of material and they've got these kind of things that they call it which are essentially these little circles that can fill with air and then essentially if you had that running across your whole hand then you can put different uh, pressure on different parts of your hand depending on what you're touching in the virtual world so mm -hmm. the way they describe it is like say you're touching the corner of a desk that only obviously the corner of the desk will be represented on the sort of the pixels uh, pressure on your hand so it kind of feels like you're touching that edge of the desk so very 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 cool indeed and what they've also built into this uh, glove is kind of like an exoskeleton so when you go to grab like a ball or an apple for example the exoskeleton will restrict the, the movement of your fingers. So it feels like you're gripping it because you've got that resistance. So again, that sounds really, really nice. Uh, it's going to have um, some force feedback in it as well. So it's kind of like an all in one uh, device uh, for sort of like um, haptic yeah. feedback, gripping and all this kind of thing. But, uh, you know, it's not quite there. Like it's, it's a long way off because it is so big and bulky and it's got this big cable right now. But I think it's a nice step towards what so we want in future. So it's only like finger tracking, but or or also like the hand palms in a way. Yeah, so it's so it's got palms in it included in it as well. So it it can track your whole hand because it uses a Vive tracker on the mm. back of it right now. Mm. Um, so that's the way it tracks, but it does um track the fingers moving as well and the gripping. So that's kind of nice. But in the demo in the video, like you'll probably see now, there's there was sections where people were putting their hand through grass. And they were kind of replicating the feeling of grass, like sliding across your fingers, mm -hmm. but also like uh, picking up animals and them kind of like moving around or like an insect, like crawling up uh, and down your hand. Um, and then obviously picking up physical items as well, like a ball, for example. Imagine so essentially you don't want to play this with Resident Evil. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> just what I wanted to say. Off. Imagine playing ah! this with Resident Evil, like your hand got chopped off and the claw just goes like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, we this. Yeah, yeah. So we're we're playing the video now, so uh, you can you can check it out on the stream. But essentially, like imagine like uh, in Resident Evil when you first go into the house, for example, and there's all these bugs on the <laughs> table, like the rotten food, and then like you feel a bug like cross over your hand, like that would be really. Or even worse, like if they extend it like to like the entire your entire body, and you all of a sudden feel yeah. a hand resting on your shoulder. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 yeah. no. Although I, I have um, to say, I, I think it's very like uh, like fundamental that they're trying to work now. Very, very basic, not aimed at consumer market probably yet. Because um, I, I, to, to get something like this working, you need to get this in a lot of people people's living rooms, I guess. Uh, yeah, I would say it's so. Not even that, Rowdy. It's the software pipe, right? Yeah, so exactly. Think about it. How is the how is the hardware knowing when you're touching something? Yeah. It's got to be in the implemented yeah. oculus sdk in the you know psvr sdk it's got to be supported mm -hmm. by the headset manufacturer otherwise yeah. there's no translation api yeah. but know, that being said I, I do find it very very cool to see stuff like this develop because it's like 100%. it's pushing the border and uh, you know it might not get implemented you know within like the the you know the next titles but it is something that is going to be eventually there and i think it's really cool that yeah. people invest time and energy and money because that's still a huge factor into technologies yeah, like this it, bearing in mind you know they got five million in funding so there are people interested in this oh, yeah, and willing to back these get, kind of projects definitely yeah you know and and especially like having been a big fan of ready player one the book and yeah, you know yeah, the audio book yeah. i listen to yeah. regularly you know that kind of like idea of the future that just you step into this yeah. suit and then you're, you're you're rigging up and then you you're strapping yourself in and mm. just going off onto this uh different world is is amazing to me and yeah, I, 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 would, love I, would def I would definitely like if you are interested in those gloves i would i would support those people for sure i mean you're not going to back something that is going to be consumer ready in like a year mm. um I mean, I, I tried uh, the ones from Neuro Digital at Gamescom. Uh, they only had like finger uh, tracking, um, but you could really like like feel uh, your like finger scanning on a device, for example. You know where you have like your fingerprint, um, and also like I had to I could play bow and arrow stuff with my hands. It was kind of funny in a way. So I was like grabbing it with my with my finger, and it was like so much easier. It's kind of like going back to the nintendo wii days or something i don't know like i was like yay here we go here we go you know and uh maybe the eye toy days as well but it worked so much better than uh having controllers in your hands of course you're not shooting things usually with your hands at least not a bow and arrow but let's say uh you're uh doing spells or you know a spell fighter could totally work but again what zim's at like it's gonna take well before the developer is gonna build it in but it's yeah. gonna take even longer before this stuff is ready to go because yeah you now like every uh, uh glove i have seen still uses like a vibe tracker or mm. has like a lot of cables of course so mm -hmm. but it's getting we're getting there but like a, a going yeah, yeah. sorry going mike yeah, I was just going to say, like, I've seen something else, another prototype recently where it's uh, dealing with hot and cold. So like you mentioned with like a spell fighter, for example, like imagine in the unspoken, if you had like an ice, uh, you know, uh, ball that you were making like as, as a spell and then throwing it at your opponent and that mm -hmm. as it kind of created the ice ball in your hand, you felt like the cold. I've tried that. That would be really, really cool. I have tried you've, that. You've tried that? Yeah. On the... I think it was Gamescom last year, even there was like a, a team from, I think from Mexico. I forgot the name though. I, I have to look it up. Uh, but it was very interesting what they were doing. They were also they were a university team and they were exploring different kind of scenarios in, in in virtual reality. And they indeed developed like a glove that like um, they had like only the fingertips there, and you could feel like sensations like cold, warm, and uh, like electricity. You could feel as well like in the in the fingertips. And then you could wow. also do like spells like that. You could like throw them around and you could feel like uh, your fingers getting warm or getting cold or like that little tingle of electricity going through. Yeah, it was That's very awesome. interesting to see. Yeah, I, I've only just been playing The Mage's Tale actually this week. And uh, that game, I, I, I think I just missed it or something. Because as a spell casting game, it's quite, quite a quite impressive start. I've only done a couple of hours in it. But I suppose, Mike, I wouldn't be going for frosty spells right now, as, as some of you might recognize. It's it's a bit cold here in the UK at the moment. <laughs> so I'll just if I'm, we're all wearing uh, sweaters. Yeah. Give, give me the beach simulator, please. I'll uh, I'll take some I'll take some more. <laughs> Thank that, you very much. No joke. That's but one of the that, reasons why I jumped one. into Skyrim uh, that much, because of the of the great weather in Skyrim. Oh God. Yeah. 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 Up with the gray beards, right on the on the on the on the misty mountains. <laughs> yeah. Uh, winter is truly coming. Yeah. <laughs>
But in London, they're developing this uh, liquid based. So you've seen obviously liquid cooled PCs where they're you know rotating liquid through to help cool without any fans needed. So you're not uh, cooling with air; you're cooling with uh, water and just keeping well. the heat away. But th there's this this cool um, I'll call it sac based um, pressure system where you wear a haptic vest and there are bubbles, basically unfilled pouches all over the vest front and back. And as you, it's it's basically for something that Nathie said earlier, guardian system. So if you're reaching your boundary of the guardian system, these things inflate to give you a feeling of like, almost like you're pressing into a foam wall. Mm, oh, that's uh, cool. So, so, if, so for safety, it keeps you in that. And also if you're having uh, if you're in a uh, gun game shooting away or whatever, and you can feel the hits on on this, it, it can just quickly inject and uh, reduce the amount of pressure you're feeling in these in these pockets around oh, it. It looks smart. really alien. That's smart. But that's, very yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. That's very interesting. Yeah, I think I've seen uh, I've seen I've seen a clip of that somewhere. It's very I don't very know what cool. What it's called? I've, no. I've missed that. But on no. this glove on Haptex, I saw a clip, a really really neat one of one of the guys we know, um, Reverend Kyle, and he he did it, and you can see he was he was watching um, raindrops fall on his hand, and he said it felt quite legitimate so although the glove looks like something you know like a an old nintendo peripheral <laughs> I, I would say we have to get there right? I mean, yeah. we're gonna get there yeah, yeah. It, absolutely kind of yeah. looks like the glove yeah. from predator <laughs> yeah yeah so uh so that is uh our future hopefully you know i we i think we all hope for mm. haptic suits and running around in a little hamster ball Definitely. in our little uh, vr yes. smiggle caves in the future mm. so. oh mike can i just say on that yeah you mentioned something earlier that was, uh, you know, we expect VR gamers are going to be a little bit more fit than the, the average couch gamer, right? Yeah. I find, like, especially now, more and more and more, like, I don't find myself doing so much room scale because I'm in a relatively small room, but also because I find titles tend to restrict, restrict themselves to rather standing and kind of arm swinging in, in, a, in a space. Um, but I, I, I recently picked up a, an, an Apple Watch and I kind of am tracking my movement just like you would on a Fitbit or something. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you traceable metrics on like Skyrim or all the other titles I've been playing. Um, you, you know, you're definitely clocking up, you know, you're, you're burning calories as you're, as you're playing VR. I've definitely found for myself, you know, the fitness through that is, is, is helping. So do you guys find any uh, positive effects of VR in that way for yourselves? Oh, definitely. Yeah, like I, 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 I'm the same, you know. Like uh, if I if if this was out when I was a kid, my mom would have gone nuts for it because she was constantly like, just get outside and like play with outside with some other kids or something like that, and like get some exercise. I'm like, yeah, but I'm playing like you know Jurassic Park on the snares, and I love it, so I'm not going anywhere. Um, so yeah, if 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 this was around then, then I would have probably been gravitated more towards it. My mom would have probably supported it more, I guess. So, uh, but yeah, it's it's great. You know, you're you're like you say, you were standing in what, 16 hours playing yeah. Skyrim? Well, that is doing stuff to your body, man. Like, you know, like the fact that you're just standing alone for that period of time, it is great, you know, exercise. Yeah. So, uh, one, yeah. One thing not to do, I was going to say before we move on. Um, yeah, I, I've been playing a lot of Vivecraft and Minecraft. And uh, if you turn off auto jump and you have to physically jump up every block and you go from bedrock <laughs> all the way up to the top of a mountain, let me tell you, your calves are going to burn the next day. Okay? <laughs> if you really want some exercise? That's not a bad idea. I saw that episode. Yeah. <laughs> it looked hilarious, though. Sim was, was going, Sim was going the entire time, stupid. like, like jumping up and down, like. <laughs> Absolutely. You won't be skipping leg day that day, that's for sure. <laughs> no. no. Okay. So moving on very quickly to touch on some releases this week. Uh, these are kind of more experiences, but they're very, very cool and uh, well worth uh, your time and checking out. You've got Coco VR, which is a, a Pixar animated kind of experience to celebrate the launch of their new film, which is going to be in uh, cinemas uh, started this week on the 22nd. Uh, it's kind of like a Day of the Dead kind of looking um, experience, kind of where you play a skeleton character. But there's loads of fun stuff you can do within the experience. You can paint your skull. Uh, and then you can eventually be part of a band, which is which is kind of nice. And uh, I'll just say now, like the train ride, it's almost unforgettable. Like it was kind of a big wow moment for me. Uh, really, really great. So I, I definitely go and check that out. It's, it's free on Gear VR and the Rift. Uh, and then also another one, which is called Dispatch, uh, which we touched on very briefly in the past. Uh, Zim mentioned it actually about an experience that really sort of was powerful and uh, really made him think and resonated with him like long after he experienced it. So I was like, oh, that sounds really interesting. I'll check it out. 
Uh, and, and Dispatch is essentially about a guy called Ted who is a police dispatcher and he's having like the worst night of his life. And it's an episodic content, like the first episode is free. It's about six to seven minutes long. And then there's four episodes in total, which you can uh, buy through an in-app purchase. I have to say it's one of the first in-app purchases I've ever seen on the Oculus Rift. So that was kind of interesting mm -hmm. in itself. Uh, but essentially, the, the whole series is uh, £2.29 and about $3, and then you can watch all four episodes. Uh, the fourth episode isn't actually out yet, so you're kind of left on a bit of a cliffhanger, but uh, I understand that's going to be out very, very soon. Uh, but yeah, that's another one that I would definitely recommend going and checking out. Uh, and then like uh, moving on to our last topic, because we are kind of uh, eating up at the, uh, the time here a little bit, is kind of moving on from room scale and, and going on to sort of like warehouse scale. Uh, experiences and that is the void so uh, the void is a, a thing that's fairly new to me like I've done a bit of research on it just recently uh, they're opening up um, the void um, experiences in London uh, Orlando Florida and Anaheim in California and essentially what it is it's a big open space that they've kind of uh, mapped out with physical objects in this world and you have these backpacks on with like uh, laptops and I guess uh, Vive headsets and so you're fully tracked within this environment and then you you walk through it and then as you're experiencing stuff within the game world so they've got like star wars secrets of the empire which looks super interesting mm -hmm. and uh, ghostbusters experience as you're going through this warehouse with these headsets on with your teammates mm -hmm. you can actually interact with real life objects and it has real life effects going yeah. on around you at the same time as well so it could be blowing like wind or stuff in your face or you could be getting warmer or colder or it could be like big sound effects going on in the background or the ground could be shaking uh, but it seems like a really nice experience yeah. uh, to check out. Uh, they're actually opening up their London uh, branch of this on the 16th of December. Now, tickets are fairly expensive. I think it's like £32 for a quick blast in the UK and $30 in the US. Mm -hmm. And I think the experience will probably last around sort of 30 to 40 minutes. But you can go in with some buddies and have this like amazing uh, mm -hmm. warehouse scale adventure. You're a star trooper, so why not? Exactly right. <laughs> exactly. Just mix um, everything. It doesn't matter. You don't need to kind of, be good at this. No, that's right. This is the kind of blurb for <laughs> the Star Wars uh, Secrets <laughs> of the Empire. Uh, under the orders of the budding rebellion, your team will travel to the molten planet of Mustafar. Your mission is to recover Imperial intelligence vital to the rebellion's survival. Alongside the pragmatic droid K2SO, your team must navigate through an enemy facility, walking into danger at every turn. Disguised as stormtroopers, Grab your blaster, solve puzzles, and fight giant lava monsters in an effort to fulfill your team's orders. That sounds pretty epic. It's like the closest thing to like a holodeck, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And I, I just love the fact that, you know, this uh, exists um, because, you know, VR is still quite niche and very small right now. I think we are kind of seeing a lot of growth just recently, uh, mm -hmm. but I love the fact that people are investing money into these kind of experiences, and especially with something as big as a franchise as Star Wars behind it. You know, I, I really hope people just go and try this out because I think it's going to be for a limited time only in the London one. I'm not so sure about the Orlando and the Anaheim one, uh, but it's only going to be there for about eight months. So if you want to check it out, I would definitely go and get your tickets now because mm -hmm. I think as soon as people start checking it out and building up the hype around it, then it's going to sell out like a, like an IMAX showing yeah. of a film, for example. And it has been made by the the team who also worked on uh, Trials of Tatooine, mm. and also on like special effects of the Star Wars movies. So those guys really know what they are doing. Yeah, is it uh, uh, yeah. Light, light and Magic? I can't remember the yeah, full name. Industrial Light and Magic. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, what we need to do is we need to all team up, meet up in London, and we need to do this as a four together. That's what we need to do. That'd be awesome. Yeah, yeah. that would actually be cool. Because I there's another th there's an experience something like that that it, it's reminding me of directly is called um, Secret Cinema. Yes, have, I've have heard, of heard of that. Yeah, I've heard of that. Ever done it? Never done it. Oh my god, I did a Shawshank Redemption one, and the thing is, you don't even know what film they're gonna do, but you essentially you go dressed up and clothes to a certain place. You get bust off somewhere. Like, you you have no details about what you're doing. You basically hand over 50 quid on the internet, <laughs> go on to a place. Like, you get stripped down to, like, your underwear kind of thing, suited up as, like, a, a prisoner, and then you're walking through what looks like an old prison. Like, it is the it is one of these places where you have to put the faith in the people who are running it, right? And that's exactly what these are, because I'm just waiting for some horror story to come out. You know, someone gets abused in one of these, like, VR rooms where you're all strapped in. Because you've, no, you've got no defense mechanism once you're in there. It's all part that's of the experience. But it's kind of like, like room escape stuff. So sign me up. Um, yeah. Nice. But, uh, 
did you say it's 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 a limited time? Do we know the, how long it's going to be around for? I think the London one's going to be around for about eight months, but it's at the Westfield yeah. Centre, so I think it's <laughs> near Stratford in London. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like you know, uh, if we can if we could make that possible, uh, then I would be so up for the four of us meeting up and going through that together. That would be so so cool. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that is. Uh, can you also open a loot box? <laughs> the loot box. <laughs> That's what you want. <laughs> yeah, of course. I mean, it's Star Wars, right? So. Of course, it wouldn't be Star Wars without a loot box. Although That's they did true. take it out, am I right? They they took it out of the game. Mm -hmm. Without a filter. Mm -hmm. They're saying in the chat. So now at least we know what Sim Talk is really into. <laughs> Being locked in in rooms. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> locked up and throw the key away. In his underwear. <laughs> he likes to be physically restrained. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we said we wouldn't talk about that publicly, Mike. Uh, exactly. I let the cat out of the bag. Uh, so yeah, so that is the void. So if you if you're interested in checking it out, go and check it out at those three locations. Uh, it's probably going to be well worth your time. It looks super super cool. So I'm excited to be uh, potentially check that out in the near future. Uh, touching on a subject that we talked about last week, uh, we mentioned the VR Game Awards, and uh, and Zim was right. Uh, Resident Evil Seven did win. Whoa 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 whoa. We're not going to say that Zim was right. Uh, we're going to say that Zim guessed the wrong title. I'm not saying it's the right decision. I'm still saying it's Lone Echo. <laughs> wow. That, that, <laughs> Rowdy's getting a bit rowdy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah, like, uh, yeah, he guessed the right title then. It was I mean, Zim was right. I mean, PlayStation VR community is really large. So it's just the number game. Like the, the, the reason that the reason I selected it was for my own reasons. But I knew that at the same time, if you look at the other titles, what else was there that was PSVR? I mean, that community is enormous. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's just a swing of the vote. Look for the next one. The next one is going to be a tougher decision. And we've got the Steam the Steam nominations going on. I'm hoping some VR titles will be pushed into that as well. So I don't know if, Mike, you, if you'd registered that, but the, the Steam nominations now. So if you have a game that you really enjoyed on the Steam platform that's VR, then, you know, go promote that because uh, certainly I'll be voting for all for all VR, VR titles. So. Yeah. Nice, interesting. Yeah, I'd love to. I love a VR title to get uh, involved in in that that sort of system. Yeah, that'd be really nice. Yeah. Um, so I just want to wrap it up. Really, uh, have we got any questions from the chat, maybe for us or about any of the topics that we've discussed today? Oh, we, just uh, uh, just now we had uh, Eric coming in, and he says that the, the largest platform is actually the Gear VR, of course, the largest VR platform. Course, it makes sense. Yeah. And then it's PlayStation VR, and then it's PC VR. But yeah. yeah. Hey, Eric. Hey, Eric. Indeed. <laughs> Yeah, I know he's right. And that's why, like most of the big manufacturers going mobile right now, you know, focuses on mobile. But uh, what we're obviously interested in is the high end enthusiast level. And we want big advancements in that. So we'll see what happens in the very near future, I guess. Mm. Like, like we discussed last time, Zim's, you know, said, mentioned it, you know, he, he's sure in his mind that the Oculus are cooking something up in the background that they haven't shared yet. Uh, they've got to be really. Um, and hopefully we'll find out maybe next year at OC5. I guess and we, and we know about Apple already putting their bid in and uh, there's there's a few big players moving. I, I'm really the other one who I'm really waiting on making the announcement for is the three dedicated VR ground up titles, including I think two that are new IP from Valve. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are kind of impatiently waiting for that. Um, I still we mentioned earlier, like Skyrim proved certainly to me and i think to many of the uh, members of the reddit community and the globe that uh, a title can be retrofitted successfully and it just got me chomping at the bit and a few others chomping at the bit of saying you know what else do you want i i certainly want left for dead i've said that before yes yeah. yes absolutely 100 percent behind you on that that is kind of one game we're really lacking right now is that kind of from other sons experience but in a zombie type world where you jump in with your buddies and you're kind of moving along this kind of story driven experience it would be amazing yeah and yeah. I, I would be surprised i would be so surprised if they're not working on it I would or be... survival game just any kind of survival yeah. game where you're just literally yeah. it's roguelike and you don't like a daisy equivalent or uh you know yeah. something like that where you're working together i want a social survival game of any nature Please, Valve, save 2018. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So Seriously. we're going to, if there's, unless there's any more yeah, questions we, uh, from the chat. We have one here uh, that says, like, uh, uh, any news on the Knuckle controllers for Vive? Uh, well, maybe no. something next year? We will, like, yeah. hear something about it. Yeah. But uh, for now, no. It's just a development kit. 
So uh, become a developer, make a simple game, and before you know it, you got some some knuckle controllers. Yeah. You know, that's it. Um, so also, Eric said that there is a loot box in the Star Wars uh, uh, in the Star Wars VR experience. So uh, yeah. Oh wow! I'm, I'm very hyped now. I, I really <laughs> want to go and open it together with everyone here. That, that's the, you've got Nathy on board now. <laughs> yeah, the loot box in there. Yeah. Nathy's in. So, as long as it's free, I'm fine. If I if we need to buy a key somewhere, then that's going to be an issue. Well, you're going to you're gonna have to take a pocket full of change in your Stormtroopers outfit around yeah. so you can put some money in the slot machine. Like, and there's like a, the a person who works at, at, at the void that <laughs> just takes the money from you. You know, it's like, okay, here you go. <laughs> um, the, the, this is the loot box you've been looking for. <laughs> yeah. 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 So um, uh, what, what games have you guys been playing this week uh, other than Skyrim, uh, just while we're waiting for some other questions? Mm any other games other than skyrim um i've played um well i've played lone echo i have uh played um uh, reaching for pedals don't know if anyone knows that title that? it's a walking yeah. simulator basically okay it's uh you mean like walking through the woods kind of thing or? yeah 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 that's like it's a uh, more of like a like a poetic experience it's something uh that, huh. that got me quite intrigued actually I, I might even do like more videos on it i have not really decided on that yet but it's basically it's uh you walk through the forest and there's this voice that is like in a very um i said a storytelling way it's like describing what you're seeing and describing what is happening and why you're there and why you're walking there and it tells a story i think about uh, two lovers that that meet each other very very poetic very uh uh calming mm -hmm. yeah, there's, there's what was no, the name of that one again rowdy uh, i believe it's reaching for pedals reaching for pedals yeah i've played that one as well and then uh, yeah I've, I've played uh undead development i've played that one as well um and i probably have played more titles but i i kind of i kind of forgot with all the skyrim going on <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> what about you, Zim? I finally buckled down and played the Spider-Man experience. Oh. And you're all going to be like, oh, he's going to rip it apart. I'll tell you what, that web slinging, if they had the web slinging from that game, and if it wasn't a soulless advertisement, if they took the web slinging from that and put that in something like a Windlands, yeah, that would that. sell like nothing else. They yeah, need but to they do don't. That yeah, they don't <laughs> felt really good. Like the sticky web thing, like pulling stuff. I mean, yeah. I mean, the quality little bit, but I'll tell you, by the end of it, they give you the worst aftertaste I think I've ever had in a demo. Where it's yeah. like, oh, you've played the VR thing. Now go watch the movie or buy the DVD. I was like, the fuck? Like, literally, I was like, what are you doing? You had a quality experience. There's um, no game. And this is just an ad. Yeah, Echo, it was, like, it was the opposite old. of what Coco did. Coco was the opposite of that. Because Coco yeah. did was it showed off some technology tricks that I think other devs need to use. Yeah, I'd never seen that before. Beautiful, yeah. free, I won't spoil it. No, no. Must play. And it's the same yeah. thing as Dispatch. It's just a must play. Like you gotta try those things, especially if they're free. Um, yeah, yeah. You, you'll see it. As soon as you, you see it in Coco, you'll know what we're talking about. But there is something in that that I have never seen done in VR before. Very smart. Very, yeah, very, very smart, smart design smart. choice. But so the, between those two has just been as well the, um, uh, the losing the name here, that uh, spell casting one, the mage's tail. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Which, the scale yeah. of the, I actually thought it was going to be kind of a short thing, but having read up about it, um, pretty lengthy title. Have any of you yeah. spent any amount of time in that? Because a couple of hours in, uh, spell casting's pretty it has, good. It has played one episode for a very long time as well. Yeah, it's like yeah, um, quality's there. Like quality's there. I, I'm, I'm. Yeah, I'm I like that they were working on that since more. DK one. So, wow. yeah. Since the DK one days, really? Okay. Yeah. yeah. It's not annoying so, about it back then. Uh, what about you, Nathy? What have you been playing, man? I haven't been playing that much. I mean, I met up with Rowdy at a YouTube party, so I was pretty much KO for like three days not because Rowdy was so awesome to talk to, which is like, very you know, tiring. No. <laughs> very tiring indeed. Yeah, you're a very energetic person. So I had to like uh, lie down after season. Um, <laughs> but uh, I played Undead Development, um, fun game. Uh, if you're looking for a good survival title where you can build a base, then yeah, it's very it's very nice for an early access title. Yeah. And um, I also played, of course, a bit of VR chat again. Um, and uh, yeah, that's about it, to be honest. Okay, okay. Yeah. Like one, one title that I didn't get to play this week that I really wanted to check out, and that is Payday Two in VR. Mm. And uh, cool. I. 
I'd actually I, like I don't I don't want to because we'll probably talk about it next week's show more. Mm. But I'd love to like maybe hook up with you guys and uh, and play that title together because robbing a bank with you guys I think would be a ton of fun. Um, but that's what I want to check out this week. So uh, maybe by next week we'll have some more information about P- yeah. Payday VR because I know that Zim wants to talk about it. But if we start him going now, then we're never going to finish on time. You better so, watch your money. Um, I'm going to cut the cut the show there. Yeah. Uh, unless anyone else has got any final questions for us, then we'll 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 leave it as it is. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but we have we have Paradise Decay and, yeah. saying uh, no one mentioned The Exorcist. Anyone? Oh, no, we anyone tried that? Yeah. Go uh, check out The Exorcist. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we also didn't mention the TP cast, by the way. I mean, no, it's not how people can get it. And, and that's the thing. Like, there are so many topics we could yeah, discuss on this yeah. on this show, but we we just yeah. we just run out of time. Yeah. yeah. But I'll go over it again. So obviously, this is a, a weekly uh, VR, AR, and MR talk show that is live streamed every Saturday on Nathie's YouTube channel. You can tune into the show live at 4 p.m. in Europe, 3 p.m. in the UK, 9 a.m. in Central US. If you missed the show, you can catch up with it every Sunday where I upload the whole show to my own YouTube channel, Virtual Reality Oasis, or check out the audio-only version on iTunes and Google Play Music. If you want to talk to us direct, I would say just look us up on Twitter and ask us some questions there if you've missed the show. So that is the end of this week's show, guys. We'll see you on next week's show. And thanks again for joining. And we'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye. Cheers. Bye.